we are pleased to introduce Ed Mayer from Machina Labs. Thank you, thank you. We have the slides on. All right, perfect. Awesome. So my name is Edward Mayer. I am CEO co-founder at Machina Labs. Um, we use artificial intelligence and robotics, combine it to uh, develop new manufacturing technologies that are significantly faster than uh, traditional manufacturing technologies. They're, in some cases, cheaper. Um, and uh, in some cases, they actually can do things that were traditionally not possible. Um, I used to work at SpaceX, and that's where the kind of the seed of the problem started, right? Um, today, um, if you want to build a physical product, you pretty much have to build a factory for it. Um, a lot of tooling and machinery that goes into shop floors are very specifically tied to the material and the design you're trying to manufacture. And the moment you want to change it, you pretty much have to invest in a new factory. Um, so it would be really nice if we had a system that could turn raw material and design intent and turn it into a final product fully autonomously. Um, so that's the thesis at Machina Labs. We're building a system, we call it RoboCraftsman, um, that does just that, right? Um, it, you can input, it, input a design into it uh, and it raw material and comes out the other way, a fully, fully finished part. So wh why can't we do this now? Um, there are two enabling components, right? Um, we needed to have, we are almost replicating what a craftsman does, right? If you think about a craftsman or a sheet shaper or a blacksmith, they're very capable manufacturers. They can use their hands and their mind to apply tools in a very creative way to create all kinds of different products. Uh, but with current factories, because we didn't have the creativity that the craftsman has, the power of the creativity, the mind of the craftsman, we made very static machines. So what we're doing is we're combining robotics, which gives the kinematic freedom of the craftsman, uh, with artificial intelligence, um, which gives the brain of the craftsman um, to build this system. Um, you guys are seeing this for the first time. We, we are going to announce this very soon. Um, but now, with this system, we can actually demonstrate it uh, with partnership with OpenAI. They can go completely with it from design intent, basically using natural language in designing the part and fully autonomously get to the final metal part in physicality and reality. You're kind of almost bridging the physical and the virtual world to turn literally design intents um, into, into final parts. We're going to do an announcement about this soon, but you guys see the picture of the part uh, earlier than the rest of the folks. Um, so how does this work? I'm going to play a video here. Um, like I said, we have this system that works like a robotic craftsman. We first apply it to sheet metal forming, which is the largest metal processing sector. Uh, it's two robots that form sheet metal parts the same way a potter forms clay bowl. Um, um, so you can see here, it will show one of the parts we are making, which is a cowling for an aircraft. We basically turn the flat sheet, the robots turn that flat sheet into the part you saw. Uh, it's a full stack software hardware system um, that starts from the design intent, from the CAD, from design of the part, and turns it into instructions and controls a set of robots that, as you can see here, like a potter, are deforming a very thick and strong sheet of metal from a flat sheet into final shape. So the system came up with all the instructions that required to do this part. It's 50 times faster to get to your first part. And it can do a whole bunch of suite of operations, right? Suite of operations. So after it formed the part, it can pick up another tool, in this case a scanner, scan the part, uh, figure out what it did. Um, use the data to improve its previous operations uh, for future part, but also map the next operation, in this case trimming, pick up a trimmer, and do, um, do the trimming. Um, and we're constantly adding more operations uh, to this robotic system. So today, um, there are four major applications we apply this technology to. The first application is the work we do directly with the Department of Defense. Um, in repairing weapon systems, right? So if a weapon system gets damaged, the user of this technology, I'm going to talk about it in the next slide a little bit more, to repair that, that weapon system in a matter of days while it was traditionally sometimes it would take more than, more than a few years. Um, we also work with the integrators in the aerospace 
um, and defense um, uh, market um, to create new products, new developments. Um, I'll, I'll talk about, a little bit about that. Uh, we also work on composite molds um, and a uh, type of molding called HIP that is used for uh, submarine, submarine ma manufacturing. We also work uh, very closely with automotive OEMs to enable a new category of automotive products that was traditionally just not even possible, right? It was not economical to do, and we'll, we'll talk about that too as well. Um, so here's an example of, let me see if I can get those videos going. Um, here's an example of the work we're doing with Department of Defense for sustainment purposes. The airplane you see over there is a C-130 aircraft. Um, it's a workhorse of the military to carry cargo and personnel. Um, if that landing gear door today gets damaged, and it does get damaged often, right? If you, uh, you know, I saw an image of it hitting a tree as it was landing, uh, or if it, it lands in gravel, um, they have to replace it. Um, right now, it can take more than a year. It says four years there. There might be a lot of logistical challenges there, but at least more than a year for sure to, to replicate this part. So if this part gets damaged, that aircraft needs to stay on the ground for more than a year. Right? So that significantly affects our mission readiness. With our technology that is already deployed in the, the depots, um, they can do this in a matter of hours now, um, and maximum days. Um, so this is another application on the development side. Uh, we built this toroidal tank uh, for NASA. Um, it's a tank that can go on a moon, lunar lander. This is an interesting story, actually. Um, we used to be able to make these kind of toroidal tanks back in the 60s. Um, and given the complexity and the low volume, sheet shapers used to make these things, right? Since then, we have exported a lot of our manufacturing. A lot of folks who used to do these things retired. So right now, we don't have the know-how how to make these things, right? Um, so with our technology, we're bringing it back, uh, being able to do these kind of complicated tanks, um, like the, this Troidal tank that goes with the lunar lander um, in the United States again. And the benefit of this automation and this type of a robotic plus artificial intelligence system is not just, oh, it's going to be cheaper, faster, but now we also have these containerized systems that can be deployed anywhere, right? Um, so not only you can make the current factories faster, but you can also deploy and bring up a new factory pretty much in a in, 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 in fraction of time what you used to be um, taking, right? Right now, this robotic system can turn into two containers. They can be shipped on a container ship, on the back of a C5, back of a C17, and be deployed to you know, theater of a battle, to allied countries, to immediately, matter of days, bring up capacity to support um, uh, our military for, for readiness and repair of the parts. And lastly, I'm going to finish with an application we have in automotive. I think this is a category with, you know, which a lot of people connect with, consumers especially, because we all have a car. Um, and for the first time, we have a technology to be able to enable everybody to have a custom car that's uniquely designed for them at the cost of the mass-produced car. Right? The challenge with automotive is that if you're building a car, you have to invest a lot in tooling. There's almost 130, 80 to 130 sheet metal parts that goes into every car. So hundreds of million dollars of investment just in tooling for that specific design that you have to invest today um, to manufacture a car. So it only makes sense to manufacture hundreds of thousands of cars before you can pay for that investment, right? So that's why all the cars that you see out there kind of look the same, right? We have to buy the same car over and over again to, to make, it, make it economical. But for the first time with our technology, you could go to a website, choose your design of the hood, right, from the collection of designs. Um, choose, even add a custom pattern to it, right? So for example, if you're a Dodgers fan, I'm from LA, big fan of Dodgers, I can put LA logo or the Dodgers logo on my car, embossed on my, logo, uh, on my car, and make it very uniquely built for myself. Um, just to give you a timeline, right now, this is a truck that we built on top of an F-150 platform. That grill that has Machina Labs logo just takes 10 hours to build. Right, like basically from the design to have that logo was only 10 hours. Traditionally, to make this die and manufacture the first part, it would be months. Not only, well, let's not even talk about the cost, which is $100,000 in cost of that, just tooling that can make this, um, this grill. Here's another example. That hood of the car, again, it's for F-150 platform. And in 12 hours, you can get a very custom designed car hood um, that is specific to you. So the long-term goal is, you know, I showed you a lot of pictures of 
um, robots and doing sheet metal forming, but the long-term goal is that we're going to have a system that can do different types of manufacturing operations, right? Right now we do forming, trimming, and scanning. We're working with some of our partners in, uh, in defense to do heat treatment, forging uh, for submarines and ships, surface finishing. So you can think of it as a system that can do, like a craftsman, could do a whole bunch of operations, can be deployed anywhere from to the front lines of battle to space eventually um, to do manufacturing right when it's needed and completely get rid of the logistic piece of the manufacturing. Um, thank you so much. You know, the, the team is a team of folks from automotive, defense, um, and uh, yeah, no, we're excited to kind of push this boundary and work with our customers to kind of bring a lot of these type of manufacturing back to the United States with, uh, with robotics and AI. Thanks.